The future for these children very much depends on what sort of cardiac defect it is. There are some lesions that we can correct and um, the children will have surgery and, and go on and have, have normal lives, um, albeit with medical checkups every year or so. Um, but there are some conditions that um, we can't fix back to normal and, and those children won't have a normal life. Um, they, they usually can run around and, and you know, have a good quality of, of life in, in the short to medium term, but some of them are facing difficult long-term um, outlooks really and, and um, with decreasing exercise tolerance and, um, and some of them may have to, to face a heart or heart-lung transplant. So it is, it's a very wide spectrum about the, the outlook for, for the long-term for these children. When the children are uh, sort of looking towards going back to school, um, it's quite important um, to liaise with the schools really. Good communication, so it's helpful if the parents perhaps have informed the school beforehand. It's also helpful that um, the school knows that it may be difficult for the child to go straight back full time and then they may need to ease in um, gradually rather than going suddenly full time because it would be quite tiring, especially in secondary schools as well, there's lots of stairs and things like that. Um, so it's important to address all aspects as soon as you can really because then everybody's prepared for that as well. I do remember being quite anxious when Harry first started school that they should know all about his heart condition and it did mean for a while every time he knocked himself at all we got a phone call from school saying he's just knocked himself do you think we should do you want to come and collect him and take him to the doctor and we'd become quite relaxed about it by then and saying no he'll be fine and he always has been and I, I feel that I panicked a bit too much at the beginning and now we're much more relaxed about it and we've never felt the need to rush him off to the doctor. <laughs> I wasn't really given a big long list uh, of activities I couldn't do. It was more the usual stuff that you hear, you know, don't smoke, don't drink. The only different one, that, the only sort of activity that I couldn't do that the other kids could do was playing competitive sports. I wasn't allowed to do competitive sports, but I could, you know, do any kind of sport I wanted to for fun, just as long as I didn't take it too seriously. Older children, teenagers, are more anxious, more conscious of the fact that they are going to have a scar, which they will have to show to their friends, and how will the scar heal? Will it disappear? They quite often say to me, as I grow bigger, will the scar stay the same or will it get smaller? But the scar actually grows with them, so when you operate in a baby who's six months old, and as they grow in length, the scar actually grows with them, so it keeps pace with them. Most children are quite proud of them. They'll show them off in nursery and call them their zipper. And I've seen many teenage girls with a scar wearing very low-cut garments, so it's not something that really seems to to traumatise them so much, but it's, it's certainly something that the parents do focus on um, as a worry in the beginning. When she gets a bit older, it would be nicer. I would like her to really understand what's wrong with her. And, um, yeah, to meet other kids that have got the same problem and stuff would be nice, so that she wouldn't feel like she's strange or anything. I feel it's important that you get access to other people um, who have got the same condition and you can talk with them because the worst thing is to have a condition and you don't know anyone else who has got something similar and you can't share it. I think it's very important that you can talk to other people, not just adults and doctors but teenagers and you can share your problems with them. There's a range of support that Reach Heart Foundation offers. Um, we have our website um, called Meet at Teen Heart which is a dedicated website for young people with heart conditions aged 13 to 19. On the website they can find factual sheets and animated diagrams and information around their condition um, and it, which is also available to parents and other young people who are friends or relatives so they can read up on the condition as well. We also offer an editorial group which is a group for young people with heart conditions where they meet with us um, twice a year and we can talk about um, certain events at which they'd like to go on or devise content for the website. We have a, a large number of um, young adult patients now that are um, transferring to adult services um, and they're having good quality of life um, but it's important they get the right support and by transferring to um, adult services we have um, specialist care available so if they want to start thinking about things like family planning they need support and help with um, getting a job and going out to work further education all those things um, we are now able to address further um, and it's much much better now than it used to be a few years ago um, and it's lovely now that I have some young adult patients coming back with children of their own to see <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.